that's not my fault. It does make me feel kind of powerless sometimes. You need to have money in your bank account in order to make money. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the six ways that I make money as a freelance illustrator. I realized the other day that I do actually have a few different ways that I am bringing in income. I think it can be a really important thing to try to do if you are a freelancer because everyone knows how unpredictable freelancing can be. You might be waiting on an invoice for 30, 60, 80 days and it's always a good idea to have other options and other ways you can keep income coming in. I hope this inspires you to think about multiple streams of revenue that you can generate in your business and let's get into it. So the biggest and probably most obvious way that a freelance illustrator can make money is through client work. So I'd say this is the biggest chunk of my income in a year will be from working with clients, whether that be magazines, brands, publishers, small or large businesses. So the main positive for me with working with clients is that it has the potential to be quite a high earner, especially if you work with large clients, they obviously have a much bigger budget. If you're working on a big project, say in advertising, there's a potential there to make enough of a living to support yourself for the next couple of months, six months, a year. There's really a lot of potential to make a decent amount of money with client work. Another positive is that it's always a great experience for me. I always learn a lot um, just by speaking with different clients and understanding what they would like from working with me. It's always a great way to learn more about my profession and I feel like I'm always learning. Speaking with my clients is also another great way of making really good business connections and I can contact them again in future to see if they need any more work from me. It often means that I then work again with them in the future. The last positive is that it's a really great way to build my portfolio. If I am able to work on a really exciting project and I'm really proud of it, it's another way to build on my portfolio and attract new clients. So the main negative for me of working on client work is the fast turnaround and the unpredictability of it all. So you might not have had work for a couple of weeks and then suddenly you are presented with a huge project, which means you have to reorganize your entire schedule. You have to work weekends, evenings, and pretty much drop everything for client work. It's quite common for me to have a really tight turnaround with work. You kind of have to make space for that and accept that it will mean you work late into the night, you work weekends, you miss out on social things. You also have to dedicate quite a lot of time to negotiating and talking about pricing and the terms in a contract. This can use up quite a lot of your time and it doesn't necessarily lead to work. So that's a real negative for me because um, yeah, it just eats into a lot of my time. And the last thing that isn't so great about working with clients is that you sometimes have to chase for payment. So you might invoice them, wait 30 days, still not have any payment in your account and then you've got to try and speak to the accounts department and forward your invoice and it can really be quite a time consuming thing again. The second way that I make money as an illustrator is by having an Etsy shop. A lot of illustrators have Etsy shops and I've had mine since 2011. It hasn't always been a reliable source of income for me. What I would say about having an Etsy shop is that you have to put in a lot of work to see any return. So the times when I'm really busy with client work or with other things is when my Etsy shop suffers because I'm not able to add new products. I'm not able to market my shop or share about it as often as I'd like to. So the positives to having an Etsy shop is that once you've got everything in your shop and organized, it can be a really time effective way to make money. Obviously, once you've organized and created these new products and put them into your shop, pretty much all you have to do then is just sit back and wait to see if anyone would like to buy any. You can kind of get on with other things whilst you're waiting for these online orders. Another massive positive for me is that I find it really rewarding to interact with customers and to hear from happy customers. I just like thinking about sending my work all over the world and it being up on different people's walls and um, yeah I just think it's really cool that someone would like my work enough to buy it for their wall. Another way that is really creatively satisfying is that I have some freedom to create my own projects and my own products and when you're working with clients a lot you can start to feel really tied down to their specifications so having an Etsy shop is just a really great creative outlet to make the things that you want to make. So the main negative for me is the responsibility that comes with shipping orders. It is my responsibility 
to ship the orders but then the responsibility is put on the delivery service and the postal service. A lot of the time that's really nerve-wracking because I have had a fair few times where products that I've sent have either been lost or they've been damaged or they've been returned to me for some unknown reason. So that kind of responsibility is stressful because I'm aware that we'll be letting people down, my customers down if the product arrived and it's damaged but at the same time that's not my fault it does make me feel kind of powerless sometimes another negative for starting an etsy shop can be that you need to have money in your bank account in order to make money so you need to cover your manufacturing costs and even if you are printing your work at home you still need to buy a printer and buy ink The third way that I make money as a freelance illustrator is by taking on private commissions. And what I mean by private commissions is when a customer who isn't part of a company or business comes to me and would like a painting for their home, so not for public use. Mostly my private commissions come in the form of pet portraits, which I have on my Etsy shop. They're a great way to make money, especially during the festive period because they can make a really good gift for friends and family. Two positives aside from from the fact that I really enjoy painting people's pets would be that there are no negotiations on fees or contracts or any of that because I have the listing in my Etsy shop, there is the price there and I have all the terms about how long it's going to take me to do and that's all that needs to be said really. And it also means that there are no client changes. Obviously I listen to the customer and what they would like from this painting and then I go off and I work on it and I send it to them and that's the painting they receive. It can be a really neat and tidy way to make money. The only negative I can think of, aside from the responsibility of sending an original piece of artwork um, in the post and usually across the world, private customers don't usually have as big a budget as some of the larger clients that I work with. So if you're talking about how much you're going to be paid per hour working on private commissions versus working on client work, you'll see that you'll probably earn much less. The fourth way that I make money is through content creation like this video you're watching now. So I've had my YouTube channel for a while now and it's only recently started to generate um, a little trickle of income. I'm actually really happy that I am able to make money this way because it's something that I really enjoy and would probably do anyway. But um, it's nice to be finally earning a little bit of ad revenue. So at the moment I make about a hundred pounds a month, something like that. So obviously nowhere near the amount to be able to live on, but considering I'm a fairly small channel, I'm pretty happy that I'm able to earn any income at all from YouTube. The main positive for me would be having an audience I can connect with because um, being an illustrator is a very lonely profession. Another positive um, would be that I'm learning new skills, which is pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of myself for teaching myself how to edit videos. Um, I'm not the most tech savvy person and I'm always learning about different equipment and um, how to better myself with every video that I make. The only negative that I can think of is the amount of time you have to put in to having a YouTube channel. It takes a long time to edit, a lot of people say this so I won't go on about it but yeah, it's a big time suck. Leading on from that, another way I make money is through sponsored content. Um, so occasionally I am contacted by brands and they want to work together and I'll make a video for them mentioning their product or via Instagram, they might want me to do some sponsored content there. Um, I'm very new to this and I've only made sponsored content a few times. I can see this area of my business growing in the future. One of the main positives for me is that I'm learning new skills, I'm learning what particular clients might want from me and how to make really successful sponsored content. Another positive would be again making connections with new clients, connecting in a different way so not only do they understand that I am a content creator they might also find out about my illustration work that way as well. It's also kind of a justification for all the hours that I pour into my YouTube channel um, if I can show that I'm able to earn a bit more of a living through YouTube it means that I can justify 
adding more hours to my YouTube channel. Um, so that's really great. A massive negative for me would be that I'm really picky about who I want to work with. So going forward, I only want to work with brands that I really want to talk about and would recommend to friends. Um, so I'm mostly looking to work with ethical companies and companies that are doing a lot of good for the world, which does leave me with a very small pool of clients that I could potentially work with. But hopefully over time that will change as more companies become more ethical and more aware of the environment and that kind of stuff. And another negative would be that as a small YouTuber, um, there isn't really the potential to earn much money um, because there are, there are so many massive channels out there that will have a much bigger audience. So the money gets put there the smaller content creators are left with a little slither of the cake. <laughs> and the last way that I make money as an illustrator is by attending illustration fairs. So I haven't, have I done any this year? I think maybe I did one this year, earlier this year. But in previous years I've done more and admittedly it's not a very big income stream for me, mostly because I don't put enough effort into it. I haven't got enough products to sell on a regular basis at fairs and I haven't really put any effort behind um, setting up a really decent stall and even having a card reader or anything like that. Some of the positives that I found about attending illustration fairs as a seller, in case you're interested in giving it a better shot than I have, would be that you get to meet new people and, and other illustrators and it's the only place that you get to meet customers face to face. The main negative to these types of, types of fairs for me, um, and again that could be because I'm not putting enough effort into it and I'm not doing it as often as I should be, is that I mostly just break even. I guess the main reason is that I live really far away from anywhere that ha would have an illustration fair, so it usually means that I have to travel and then pay for travel and accommodation, and on top of that you will have to pay for your stall hire. It's more of a social thing for me. That is everything that I'm going to talk about in this video. Um, I hope you learned something about the different ways that I make money as an illustrator. I'd love to hear from you if you have any interesting ways that you make money as someone creative. I'd really love to hear about that in the comments. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments as well. And if you are not subscribed, then please do. I make uh, twice weekly videos, I'm trying to, on illustration and my life as an illustrator. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye.